something about your love Yeah, there's something about your love Smooth like cognac, I'm so in love Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of The Whiskey Geeks. I am Tim. And I am Alex. And we are two brothers that are combining our love for whiskey and comics. And we are trying, our quest is to find the perfect pairing of those two things. Absolutely. We did a good job this week, sir. I, I really like this one. And it's, it's yeah. the whiskey was like came from something that I know I love, the distillery. And then the book came out of completely left field because you said, hey, have you read this? I had not. And I really enjoyed it. Yeah, we are hitting a horror book, a horror action book from Image Comics today. And um, a whiskey from, dare I say, both of our favorite distillery? Say, yes. Okay. It's our favorite <laughs> distillery. Bunna. Bunna. The friends of Bunna Hobbin. Um, let's see. We got this. I was gonna I've, say. I've got. I've even. I'm drinking out of a Bunna Hobbin. Oh, Glen you Karen. Too. You too. Oh huh? yeah, <laughs> going, going all out. Um, yeah. So we're drinking the Teutschina Da, and I'm gonna let you take it away and tell us about this gorgeous dram that yeah. we're drinking from so, the Isle of Isla. The Isle of Isla. Um, so this Bunna Hobbin uh, actually was just released. I was gonna say. Th this year, released in 2020, uh, 2020. Mm -hmm. and it is, it's not their first peated expression of their line, no. but it is their only current peated expression of their line. Yes. So in their, in their core range, this is now one of their core ranges that they're offering. So yeah. uh, Boonhaven is known for the sherry influence of doing exclusive aging in the sherry casks, ex sherry casks, which we both love, mm -hmm. um, but then also being an Isla, you also get some of that underlying um, smoke. Now, Budenhaven is not known as a peat monster by no, any it's, means. No, it's the like, it's like the the interesting thing about Bunna as a as a distillery. I mean, you tell someone like, oh, it's an Isla, everybody's going to be like, okay, it's a Lafroy, a Bomor. Uh, Lagavulin and Ardbeg is going to be a Colila. There's going to be a yeah. bunch of peat. It's going to burlotic, <laughs> burlotic for sure. It's going to punch me in the face. And like the, the Buna 12 and the, the Buna 18, the Buna Hobbin 18 is, I think my favorite, like my favorite whiskey in the market yeah. that I've had that that's like affordable. Um, I'll get to one in, in a bit when we're talking about Buna that I've had that I've liked more. Um, it's just not really gettable. Um, <laughs> But they're like sherry bombs. Like the yeah. the eight the eighteen is just like an oloroso sherry explosion. Which I mean, put anything is, in an oloroso sherry cask, and this guy's gonna love it. Gonna drink it. <laughs> gonna drink it. So this is like an interesting thing for Bonahaben. Yeah. So this, I mean, so they've they've had it's called so toich ada meaning two, the like smoky. Right. Two Smoky was tea. because they had this previously. They did have a Teutsch before. Yep. And that then got replaced with the uh, Chabonic, yes. which you can... St there are still a few bottles out in the wild. Floating around. There's, if you want to go hunting, Chabonic's like CEO Chabonic. Yeah. But if you can so find it... If you find one, I would suggest buy it because there's just there aren't many that are out there anymore. No. And then they didn't have any peated in their core line for like for a little bit. So when I saw this, um, if this is your first time listening to us, we're both in Ontario and Canada. So when I saw it at our local, at the uh, the LCBO, I immediately was like, a peated Buna? Yes. And I just, I picked it up. I didn't think twice. And I went and I bought it. And I came home and my wife said, said buy it. <laughs> yeah. She's like, you went to the liquor store today? And I was like, I, I didn't mean to. <laughs> it happened. Don't <laughs> I, don't worry about I don't know it. what happened. Yeah. Um, and so, I, I mean, I I called you or texted you or whatever and was like, there's a new Buna out and I'm pouring myself a dram right now. And and I think, I, I don't remember exactly what I said, but I was like, stop what you're doing, go buy a bottle. <laughs> yeah. Because it combines what we love about Bunahaven with that, the sherry influence. Mm -hmm. But then they add in some really nice peat smoke. Really and this nice dram beat. does a really good job of taking something slightly unexpected yeah. and putting it into something that you love, and it works really, really well. 
Yeah. Um, the first time I tried this was actually in that epic Buna tasting that I partook oh, right, right. Uh, earlier in 2020. So there's a whiskey club at Western Canada. Um, they set up, I think it was the Park Whiskey Society. I don't want to, I really hope it's that one. Sorry if it wasn't. Um, <laughs> we can, we can they, fix that in the link down below. That's true. Um, <laughs> but he, he ran this epic Buna tasting with their Canadian brand ambassador um, shouts to Mike uh, Brisebois, the whiskey explorer. Go follow him. He's awesome. Great follow um, on Instagram. Really good follow on Instagram. Um, and so I joined into this tasting and there was 10 Buna Hobbins in this tasting. And ten. the main 10. Ten. It was, and it was intense. Um, the main reason I did it was we got to taste the 46 a 46 year old bona which was insane um our the yeah. whiskey geek's father was also in on it and he is such a nice man that he actually saved half of the samples and shipped them to you yes i did, did the same so we are going to be doing we're going to record the two of us doing we're going to do this epic bona yeah. tasting together and it's going to be great so that was when i first had this um and i mean i will say also tasting the the 18 a bona 25 a bona 46 and a a bordeaux cask bona which was yeah. incredible this one still stood out yeah and at like a hundred dollars a bottle i'm gonna so, go out on a limb right now best value in the market okay so i'm glad we landed that. that's something i was going to bring up so for what you're getting and at the price point this is now just home run. I'm going to have a bottle of this on my shelf at all times. It's um, for, yeah. One thing that's, I will tell you is this right near, this is a bottle kill for bottle me. kill. Oh no. This is a bottle kill for the podcast. So I now need to go get some mic. I'm going to call you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm going to go, I'll go get one. Um, but it's uh, an incredible whiskey. So I'm going to start drinking it. I think. Yeah. As... I was going to say, get in there. So what, uh, like the first thing, the first thing that I notice when you get in is obviously the smokiness that comes out of the glass. Um, it's not something that you're used to. You still like the color wise, like you still are pulling some of the darker notes and the color that you get out of those sherry casks. So it does, you know, it looks like a Buna. Um, but what you, when you stick your nose in there, you are getting like right up front. You just get a smack of smoke. Yeah. Now underneath that, you still are getting some of those sweeter, like the hints of the sweetness that the you really... get underneath. Like a bit of, I mean, you still do get a bit of the oak, like from the cask influence there mm -hmm. as well. But some again, some pepperiness as well. Yeah. The spiciness and stuff. The interesting thing to me. I'm just going to move, go to the tasting. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, you get a whole lot of, you get the peat, but it's like a sweeter heat. It's not a sweeter peat, sorry, a sweeter smoke smell taste. My gosh. Mm -hmm. um, it's not an, it's not an Ardbeg. It's not a Lefroy. No. It's not a assaulting peat, um, peat taste that you get from some Islas. And again, no, I love that stuff. Yes. <laughs> not everybody does. Um, it's still strong. It's still really strong peat flavor. So, if someone is iffy about if they like peat, I would probably say mm, it's maybe probably not ease the them to intro into someone. Maybe ease them in with like. I mean, our more number, <laughs> more number one is fifty bucks, and it's yeah. it's got enough there. But like, there's others too that aren't Islas that I think can get you here. Talisker, yes. Talisker is a great intro to Isla. Uh, Long Row from Campbelltown, they have a peated, which is good. It was one that we just discovered, Ben Romick. Yes. They have a peated that is like whew, really, really good. So there's ways to get, and get people interested in the peat stuff bef before hitting them with this. But yeah. the interesting thing to me is like after you take that first taste, going back and smelling it again, it just is – that's where you get the sherry. I was going to say that's now where there's a lot more depth to the nose now. Yes. Like you're getting like before you were like there's hints of pepper. Now you're getting like it expands on that spiciness a little bit. Yeah. It's there's different um, levels of the like almost like a spice. 
like the gingery, nutmeggy, cinnamon, like something in like something in there. And it'll be different for everyone. Like we say yeah. in most of our like in all of our content, like we're trying to take the snobbery out of yeah. whiskey, right? This doesn't just have to be something that you have to be all highbrow about and you know, like, no. oh, you have to drink it out of a Glen Cairn glass. I mean, we happen to have some, so that's what we do, but yeah. heck, I've gone I've had, had it out cup? of I've done it. Yep. Taken a walk around the uh, the neighborhood in in the COVID times and yep. poured it into a nice little pink, hot pink plastic glass because that's what go. you have. I mean, so you know. In the comments, tell say, us what tell us what you guys. If you absolutely. have a bottle of this, if you try it, tell us what you get. If you get something completely different, yeah. let us and know. And if you go, that's and I mean, even part. if you go online, like you know, there's there's certain sites where they they do reviews, and you know, we like some more than others. But even going and comparing between those they'll have different things, right? It's like, oh, oh this yeah. person thinks it's raspberry. This person thinks it's black currant. This person thinks, you know, it's it's raisins. And this one says, well, no, it's sultana. You Sultanas. Know, like, whatever, right? It's, it's you know, you get in there and you get out. Everyone has a different palate. Everyone has a different sense of smell. So, like, you're going to pull different things. But yeah. that being said, um, yeah. I'm getting some cinnamon when I go back to it again. Um, I do get more of that sherry influence sweetness now. Uh, yeah. When you go back. Absolutely. Um, so now, now that I've talked a little bit about this, uh, since you were the one that turned me on to Cry Havoc as a book, I'm now going to sip a little bit and enjoy. I'm going to listen to you talk. Tell me about Cry Havoc. Cry Havoc from Image Comics. Um, what an incredible find this was. I found this book it was a few years ago. I think it was in 2016 when it came out. And I honestly just grabbed it off the shelf when I was at my local comic shop shouts to heroes in London, Ontario, a phenomenal store. If you're uh, in the area or if not, you can call them or email them, see if they've got anything and they will ship it to you. So support your local comic shops, wherever you are. Absolutely. Um, Indigo is great. Chapters is great. Going direct to Marvel and everything is great, but independent businesses now more than ever need your support. So please support a local comic shop of your choosing. Um, yeah. So I was just, there on my weekly comic run back in 2016 and just this cover i was kind of like is that a giant wolf like that art looks pretty cool cry havoc that's an interesting title and then i just opened it up and saw this artwork <laughs> and immediately was like i'm gonna like this yep. book i'm gonna buy that um so i just bought it sight unseen um other than the cover and um was a little shocked with how violent it is it's de it's definitely a action horror book more along the lines of a horror book that's very violent not safe um, for work not safe to leave out if you have kids no don't Which, leave it on a coffee table no coffee tables <laughs> no there's some... my seven-year-old went grabbing like i've got the uh, i've got the trade nice and uh so i was actually reading this we took a little trip to uh we rented a cottage and so it's a nice big fireplace and you know i'm, I'm pouring myself a dram of the uh, of the buna and then you know someone needed help with something so i walked away and i came back and my son's like picked it up and he's like what's that i was like don't open that not for you <laughs> yeah yeah there's a lot of violence there's some nudity um there's some intimate scenes between consenting adults so um so caution on that however uh a phenomenal story um yeah it's i mean simon spurrier the writer and ryan kelly um, two names that I didn't know before picking this book up. Um, what a friggin' masterful job they did on this six six issue series. I really wish there was more. I know. Um, I like I've read some some exit interviews that they did when it was done, and they've got like ideas for volume two. Hey, Image Comics, you should uh, have them do volume two, please, because. <laughs> Or anybody, like, please someone buy this IP someone. and do it. Um, or, hey, guys, can you please put it out yourself? Or Kick, email me with... Kickstarter. Kickstarter. Kickstarter it. It's amazing. Um, yeah. The really, really interesting thing about this book is it's one of those action-adventure horror stories that has the concurrent storylines happening at different times. And the way that they do it is with the coloring. So they've hired different colors to tell the different stories. So Ryan so Kelly does smart. all of the art and then they've had three different colors. So there's like a storyline going on in London, England. There's one going on in Afghanistan. And then there's one at the end in like an undisclosed place. The red, 
the red the one. Red, the so, red city. So there's like blue around the London stuff, yellow around Afghanistan, and then the red is around like the, the red city at the end. So it's this like mishmash of concurrent storylines all happening at different things that you know is going to come through. And just the way they did it, I thought it was such a smart, smart, smart way of delineating between the different stories with just yeah. having a different colorist come in. So the art stays the same, but the colors are different. The shading's different. Yeah. And it's like, so you clearly know, okay, I'm in the story. Super smart. Yeah. Instead of just having like, you know, like a little bl- like box up at the top where it says like the year or whatever, or yeah. like two weeks ago or that, which, which is normally what you see. Yeah. This is such a fast way to visually give that cue to the reader like, okay, you're somewhere different now. Yeah. And then you can easily associate when they jump back and forth, where am I right now? Both like in time as well as geographically and in the story arcs, like, okay, this is the like before times and then this is like she's in the middle and this is where she's, you know, like this is the end game in the Red City and what's going on there. And it was, yeah. that was, that was what jumped out. And that's what I really, like that's what sticks with me about this. It's something I haven't seen before. And it was a really unique way of storytelling, and I just loved it. Yeah. Um, give us a quick synopsis of the story. Okay. Real quick. Yeah. Is this this is one that I really don't want to talk too much story? <laughs> no. Because it's such a fun read. I really want people to just go buy it and read it for themselves. But yeah. So okay. So like this is like really drummed down. So um, Louise is the protagonist. She is a street performer in London, England who is bit by a werewolf. Whoops. As just, yeah, she's like walks down a a dark alley. It's raining. She's trying to find somewhere. She gets bit by a werewolf. And lo and behold, of course, she's now a werewolf. Um, She can't remember anything when she, like that's the, the thing. She doesn't remember anything that happened. So like when she comes out of it, she doesn't remember having done anything. Um, her girlfriend that she's living with is, you know, like obviously that relationship starts to fall apart. Um, so you show the artwork of the werewolf bite. Yeah. Pretty Uh, effing cool. Pretty gnarly. Really, 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 really gnarly. It gets way more violent than this, but yeah. um, So, well, so that the, the, I would guess like the early time story arc features around the transformation, her trying to understand what's happening the relationship between her and her girlfriend and then how she gets approached by secret government agency X where she gets drafted into with the hopes of a cure Um, shift to the yellow artwork when she's in Afghanistan, she's been drafted into like a team team of like a kind of like a team of, of supers yeah um you don't you don't really get a sense of you know where they're from even their names what the abilities are you really have no idea she's just all of a sudden in a helicopter on a mission and she's told like don't talk about it there's official u.s military people there that have been told like basically those guys are in charge so it's kind of like private military blackwater ish and they're going on some mission to find something something so there's that part of the story and then there's the end part in the red city where she has been captured and by somebody by somebody that has links to that military organization Mm -hmm. and she's been captured and is the really interesting part is the narration that's going over top of the whole story is the person who has captured her is sort of telling this story right from actually I think the first page am I right here the f- very first yes. page of the first it says book the it's, end yeah and it's and yeah it's it jumps like to the, the end beginning. and then it jumps and Louise is in prison and it's this person saying like so you think you know what's happening and then it shifts to like way before she was a werewolf so anyways yeah it's it's a little all over the place like a Tarantino <laughs> movie yeah it's like Reservoir Dogs where you're jumping all over the place um It's got amazing artwork throughout in all three different scenes. The colors like really jump the, it is a horror book though. Like there is some brutal gore. Um, Some of the other, 
others or the supers or the mutants or whatever um some of the stuff they do is like i remember turning the page and there was like a like the two-page layout of the one scene Big and it was splash just, page that's pretty gnarly and that a couple was, of them. Uh, yeah so so there's some of that so i mean it's not for the faint of heart but mm-hmm. i like this is probably the first like like strong horror book that i've read and like I've dabbled in some like Dracula style, but not not like this. Um, I really liked it. It was mm-hmm. like it was very entertaining. Um, I, I felt the same thing. Like it, the the story arc ended after this five issues, six issues, six yeah. six issues. I've got the trade, so um, yeah. So it ended, and it definitely left me wanting more. Yeah. Uh, the story was like it was really well written, and, and it came to a conclusion. Like, don't get me wrong. It did, there wasn't a cliffhanger that I'm like, how is there not more issues? You know, so yeah. the story concluded, but there's clearly some place to go. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. yeah. So go pick it up, everybody. It's really good. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was um, great. It's, you know, it was, su- it's surprising. And, you know, in, in my mind, that's not that I was going to be really, not that I was surprised at how good this was, but for a distillery that for the most part doesn't dabble in peated whiskeys um when they do it hits really hard yeah and i kind of feel like it's same same as you i don't really read a lot of horror books <laughs> um but i guess, this I guess one, the walking dead sort of horror yeah but i don't get yeah. the same like, it's not the, monsters yeah like this is like straight like a straight monster this is like yeah. And it's a book that we're going to talk about, like Swamp Thing, yeah. um, like the origin of the Swamp Thing, uh, the Alan Moore one, like that's going to be coming up in, in an episode. Um, that's like a, a really good monster story, but yeah. that's like classic, like universal monsters, right? It's like, yeah. And this is like, yes, there's some werewolf stories, storyness to it, but there's like a whole lot more yeah, and way more monsters and, and everything. And one thing that I actually want to point out to folks is I know some people when they read comics, they'll get to the end of the story and then they'll just see like pages of, of writing and it's, and they're just like, eh, I'm not going to read that. You need to read the annotations in this, in these books because it goes through page by page. And the thought that they put into this book is bonkers. It, it like tells you, Oh, so this monster that's on page six in this panel that's from this mythology, from this culture, and this is why it's in this scene. The tattoo on this character is this letter, and it means this in this mythology and this religion, and that, and we'll find out more next issue as to why he has that in the annotations. So it's like the depth of research that they put in to like every detail, like every single monster creature that you see in this book, they like explain it, and it all has a place it's not just like and i'll just name a monster it's like hey we just put a manticore in here for no reason yeah like there's a reason why that that manticore is there and they tell you like it's just it's it takes that book to another level for me reading the annotations yeah. Super well, and fun. It's, like a lot of times horror people think it's like it's campy it's like hack and slash there's like blood for the sake of blood but this is actually a lot more intellectual mm-hmm. and the story like the story drives it. It's not the, like, it's not the gore that like brings people in and sort of drives the story forward. It's actually the other way around. And there happens to be that. Like, right. Does that make sense? Like, a lot Absolutely. of times people go to see a horror movie and they're like, Oh, I just want to see like saw for for instance. Right. Yeah. Like no one cares about the story. They just want to see, porn. they want to see the trap. Exactly. They want to see the yeah. traps. They want to see the guys insides pulled out. They, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like this has elements of that in it, but it's smart. Yeah. Like it's really smart. And like, there is a, like there's a twist and like, there's some, like a big reveal at the end. And it's, yeah. it's really interesting. Absolutely. Yeah. So here's my plea to image comics. You know, yeah. Stared on the barrel for this one. Hey, image comics, please give us volume two of cry havoc. Uh, and if not, Hey, uh, Simon and Ryan, please give us volume two of cry havoc. I really want more of this book. It's fantastic. Yeah. And while we're at it, Hey, Bunna Hobbin, make more peated whiskey. Yeah. Because you guys kill it. This yeah. Is a it's really, so good. Really, really awesome bottle. I'm very upset that this is empty. Um, 
This and there's the, none in uh, there's none in London right now, so that's also a bummer. I was gonna say there there is some up here. So okay. although we'll no, talk. I was no, gonna I say I bought the last wrote. three bottles yeah. in the province. I think the last time we checked online, <laughs> which is I will find that bottle. But anyways, yeah. Um, so but that's why that's why we did this pairing, right? It was sort of two two things that were slightly unexpected. Yeah. That ended up working really well and we really enjoyed it. Yeah. And, and so. the, and the pair together works really well. It's like, you know, a monster story that's really smart. And then you get this strong peated whiskey, but you have these other layers to it. Yeah. They're both super, super layered. Um, and it's, it's like, it's more of an intellectual night than just, you know, we've had some, we've got some pairings that are just like, Hey, here's this book that's super fun and it's hilarious. And then here's just like a really straight down the middle whiskey. Yeah. You know, you're going to, you're going to like it. It's got these notes and blank and you're good. Yeah. But like, these there's are a, layered. There's yeah, way there's more a, to both of these. Yeah. I was just going to say, there's a lot more going on in Cry Havoc than in some of the other books that we've reviewed. Oh yeah. There's a lot more. Depth. And like you said, with the annotated notes, like I didn't know that until you pointed that out to me. And yeah. I can't wait now to go back and sort of reread the whole thing. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to read all the annotated notes first and then go and read it so that when it hits me, I'm like, all right. You see it. Yeah. Yeah. It's super, super cool. It's well done. Uh, It's amazing. Um, What else are we talking about? Because I know there's always, we always do a third thing that. So. We pull a theme out of the books that we pull out. Yeah, so we we sometimes talk about it before, we sometimes don't. Um, So this time I thought we could talk about some other characters in comics and movies that either have power thrust upon them or are Mm -hmm. unwilling or unwanted abilities are are given to them. with it's the it's not that like the unwilling hero kind of yeah yeah sense. sort of like because gotcha. louise, louise in this book like she's definitely an unwilling hero mm-hmm. um like she's unwilling and is not in a good place <laughs> for the majority of this book right i know um so, so yeah so i thought we would like we could kind of explore some of those um the first like one that jumped out at me and it partly was because of the artwork, the way that they do the werewolf, how it's like wispy black and there's like almost like tendrils. It made me think of Venom mm. and how Venom, like t- like when Eddie Brock like transforms into Venom and like gets bigger and like you've got those black strands like sort of going out and wrapping around him. Yeah. It really reminded me of that. And That's really good. And how like Eddie Brock. Those, like, those, that Spider-Man animated show from the 90s yes when when they did the venom carnage stuff oh my gosh that was great that's on disney plus right yes it is okay i gotta go watch that i was gonna i was gonna i keep saying that like i gotta go back and watch like the x-men and the i've watched a bunch of the x-men it holds up that show rules i watched gargoyles too on there that show (gasps) also rocks and also holds up um so that's a good one yeah that's a really good one so I had that. Can I can I can I pull one? Yeah, yeah, go. I think Harry Potter is a really good one, and we we talk about Potter a lot on this show. Actually, uh, I think with good reason. That story is an icon. Yeah, because um, he's kind yeah. of an unwilling hero for yeah. sure. I mean, he was he was chosen. He's the chosen before one. he knew what was like. Like yeah. he was a baby, so like yeah. he had no choice and got marked by the Dark One and. Mm-hmm. Yeah, became a That's horcrux. Right. If look honestly, that should not be a spoiler for anyone at this point. It's 2020. If you don't know what happens at the end of Harry Potter, where have you been? And anyone who's fault. listening to this clearly has already already knows. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, no, I think I think that's a really good one because mm-hmm. again, like didn't want it. I mean, sure he had sort of the you know the magic inside him, but certainly didn't want to be the chosen one. Yeah. Right? Um, well, off that one. Uh, very similarly with Game of Thrones, like Jon Snow, right? Absolutely. So he didn't want to be br- like brought back when Melisandre um, brings him brings him back from the dead. Um, I remember, like, I remember when I was reading the book when he died. I was up at uh, I was up at our cottage, and I'm reading that part, and I threw the book across the room because <laughs> that's how like the book ends, right? It's just, I yeah. was like, wait, what? And so, anyways, 
Um, so yeah, Jon Snow very much like, you know, like didn't want to be a lead, never wanted to be the leader, never wanted to be the soldier. Like he wanted to go to the Night's Watch. He wanted to be a loner. He wanted to go up off the top of the world. So yeah. So super interesting that we're bringing up Jon Snow. Uh, just a quick aside, because this is fun. Um, I play online video games. Shocking. Someone who hosts a <laughs> Whiskey Geeks podcast plays video games online. No way. One of my, my like online video game friends is a, a buddy down in Alabama. Shout out to Wook Warrior. Uh, <laughs> um, he's actually just watching Game of Thrones for the first time ever. What? Yeah. And it's been so fun getting online with him like a couple times a week and then be like, where are you in game of Thrones? Cool. We got to talk about it. And at the, the day that we're filming that we're recording this, um, he's watching the very last episode. So when we're done recording, I'm probably oh going to stay up late tonight and hop online because I want to, I want to have a chat with thoughts. them. Here's thoughts. Yeah. Cause we can, we can do a whole game of Thrones special. Yeah, we'll you know what we do... should, we'll have to, because there's all the game of Thrones whiskeys. Well, cause whiskey dad, our whiskey dad has yeah. the whole collection. Has the whole run. I've got a couple. Yeah. Here. So I've we'll got, we'll do a we'll yeah. do a special where we'll 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 deep dive a Game of Thrones. Yeah. Give our thoughts on that and then drink some of the Game of Thrones whiskeys. We'll maybe do like a tasting yeah, instead beautiful. of a flight and do one of yeah, those. Yeah. So that'll be fun. Um hit me with um, some other ones. So Bruce Banner, which oh, I yeah. think is like speaking about like losing control, not remembering everything that happens when he goes all uh, Hulk mode. Um, you know, the gamma radiation didn't, you know, didn't ask for it, that whole thing. Um, a, also in the Marvel universe, uh, Jane Foster, when she becomes Thor mm -hmm. in that amazing, uh, Thor run. Jason which, Aaron uh, wrote that, right? Jason Aaron and, uh, Russell um, Dowderman. Dowderman. Yeah. So like the writing, the artwork, it's, it's incredible, but go again, and pick up those books now because... Love and yep. Thunder is coming, folks, yes. the movie. Yeah. And that comic run is awesome. insane. Yeah. Um, Russell Donerman. Yeah, I mean, top, we've... One of the top guys doing it right now. That one is. <sighs> Love him. Yeah. I actually, I... We will get to it, but I, I actually own a artist print of a page of a Russell Donerman book, uh, one of the War of the Realms books. And nice. I just, I became enthralled with him because of that Thor book. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll put that, I'll put a screenshot yeah. of that when we get to yeah. it. And then from my like super geek nerd literary past, oh, I Randall know exactly Thor, where you're going. Randall <laughs> Thor, the dragon reborn, uh, oh, you know, she heard it from the two rivers. Yeah. Wheel of time. I still um, haven't read it. If you've got the time to, I, if you've got the time to read 20,000 pages, it's it's great. As the Dude. father of a seven-month-old child, <laughs> I don't right now, um, but it's you know, on my list. You could do the audio books and listen you know at like 1.7 speed and just sort That's of true. like crank those bad boys out. That's true. I'm actually, I'm actually re... I'm doing that right now, actually. So like, obviously, I've read all the books. I own all the books. I, I It's my favorite book series. Um but I'm re I'm now listening to all the audiobooks because mm -hmm. I don't, I don't have time to reread them. Like I've, I've got two kids, you know, like a seven yeah. and a three year old. Like I, I don't have the time, but yeah. I pump it up to 1.7 and just blast through it while I'm like nice. shoveling, walking the dog, whatever. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was, that was sort of my last one. Do you have any, um, any that jumped to mind? I think like or? the, I mean, the only kind of other one that I'm thinking about, but it's kind of a weird one would, would be this guy. Oh, okay. Like the whole Anakin, you know, is as the chosen one, but was he right, actually right. the chosen one? Answers no. Yeah. Um, but like, he you did know, bring balance to the, oh, that's a whole other thing. It's a whole other thing, but like, <laughs> you know, was the whole him being labeled as the chosen one from being six and just driving pod race, like just doing pod racing and tattooing, hearing that you're the chosen one. Did that actually set him on that path? That's a conversation yeah. for another day. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I think, I think you hit, I think you hit a lot of them yeah. um, on I mean, that. The, fan, um, the fantastic four, like, you know, like they all turn because of, yeah. you know, again, accident. And I mean, they all There's so many heroes that are like accidental yeah. powers. Like yeah. so you could say the same about Spider-Man and, yeah. um, I mean, all of the mutants. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in the Marvel world, all yeah. of them. 
Uh, I mean, you could even probably talk about Hal Jordan. You yeah. know, he just got the Green Lantern ring. Um, yeah. You know, uh, so I think that, I think this is them. But I think you hit the you hit the. Yeah, it's the sort of more of the ones like either they don't have control over it. It certainly wasn't asked for. Um, yeah. So, so anyways, yeah, that's uh, that's that's what I've got for that. I love it. Um, let's get into our ratings. Yeah, let's do it. So we've got the Canadian Whiskey Geeks, our CWG ratings for these. Um, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna go first here with my rating for the the Bunahav and Toich Ada. Um, I really really enjoy this, and yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna give this a uh, an eight point five. I find, I mean, again, it's, I'm sure I'm a little biased. It's from my favorite distillery. I love all things big and smoky and peaty. Um, it's actually kind of interesting that Buna is my favorite distillery, yet they're not known for their smoke. And that's what I really love. Yeah. But I just, the complexity and the the depth and the smoothness of everything they put out is what really draws me in. Um, I do like a big punch of like charcoal smoke fire. Um, you know, like Octomore is one of my, I love Octomore. I don't put water in it, even though it's, you know, 58%. And yeah, uh, I'm very, but, very excited for our Octomore episode. Uh, and if you look closely, spoiler alert, somebody that you see on this screen <laughs> <clears throat> is what we're pairing with Octomore. And I'm yeah. very excited for that one. Yeah. Cause I agree. So that's, that's going to be great. So yeah, this is uh, the layers that uh, the, the smoke brings in to all the things I like about Bunahaven. Um, I just, I really like it. So yeah, it's got a 8.5 for me. Yeah. Um, I'm going to hit, hit the same yep. uh, 8.5. It probably would have been an 8 just because um, I like stuff to be a little bit stronger in flavor. Like, I I'm not complaining. Let's get that. Let's get one thing straight. I think it's great. I think it ups to an 8.5 and could almost go to an 8.75 if we were doing fractionals because of the value. Yeah. Um, I think being $100 for something that's so complex and deep, uh, you kind of can't beat it. But for me personally, nothing's going to be hitting the 9, 10s for me unless it's really special. Yeah. Um we have a few of those coming. Yeah. Um but uh but yeah, a solid solid 8.5 for me. I'm going to go first on the book. Um again, like I, I it's going to come through at a, a 75 almost 8 for me. And oh my gosh, did we just lose you? <laughs> quick technical glitch there sorry folks we're gonna come back in i think where we left off was me going into the comic grading yeah so we're gonna go with that <laughs> yeah <I did. laughs> um i'm gonna give it a 7.5 okay um it's it's really really good it's super enjoyable i obviously want more of it um i've you know I've, i think i've read it three times this isn't something that i'm that i'm pulling off once a year twice a year um we've got a couple of those books coming there is another one that was like a surprise book that is like one of my favorite stories ever which is one that not a lot of people know about and i'm not going to spoil it but i'm super excited to talk about it um as i think i've brought up in like three episodes about how excited i am to talk about this one book <laughs> um you know it's Honestly, I think everybody, if, if you like horror movies or if you like, if you like horror books, if you like action adventure stuff, totally get it. It's, it's a great read. Um, but it's, it's not for everybody. No, it's, which um, is a, another, which is another reason why the Buna didn't, doesn't go into that next level because it's really, it's not, it's not a for everybody thing. Um, but if you like, if you like horror stories, you're going to like it. Yeah. Um, I've, I've also got it as a seven and a half and for, I mean, for similar reasons for me, what, what gets it to a seven and a half is the artwork. 
It's mm. fantastic. <clears throat> I love the thematic color scheme. I love yeah. the different color, um, different colors that they brought in. The the way they set up the story with like the the now time, the before time, and the the after time, and the jumping around like that was really interesting. Um, the I'm not a like I'm not an overly big gore guy. Yeah. Um, so not that I you know like will avoid it necessarily, but um, you don't for me, seek I, like, it out. I, I don't seek it out. Like so, it uh, it, it got knocked down a little bit uh, for me just on my personal like preferences uh, because of that. But that being said, like if this was just um, like just some of the standalone art pieces, like I would put the artwork at this like closer to a nine. Because visually it is it is pretty it is beautiful, yeah. Yeah. right? But um, yeah, just packaged together like I've got it. I've got it at a, a seven and a half. It's a it's like a nice it. standalone enclosed story, which with everything getting sequels all the time, it is kind of nice that it's like, you know, here the six issues you're you're done. That's it. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Nice. And then uh, what about the pair together? The pair together. Um, <laughs> So I've got the I've got the pairing at a um, like again seven and a half to eight is somewhere is was what I've got it at. Um, I'll go I'll go with I'll go with seven and a half. The sort of that unexpected enjoyment, um, you know, being a little bit a little bit of a surprise coming from both the book and the whiskey. It was it was really nice. I mean, obviously that was the theme of why we decided to put these two together. Um, so I, I think it works really well together. Uh, what, uh, what are you thinking? I'm actually going to up it a little bit. We're going to get Podcat in here, maybe. There she oh, is. Oh, there she is. We're almost when... made it the whole episode without Podcat <laughs> screaming at us. Um, I'm actually going to go a little bit higher on the parent. I'm going to give it an eight and a half. Okay. Um, and I think that's that's a personal thing for me. Um, I It goes that high for me because I like both of these things so much and it, just with the whole the surprise factor of like again i'm not surprised i liked a peated bonhaven yeah i'm not um however tasting it when i'm used to non-peated expressions from bonhaven i was i was pleasantly surprised i think that's yeah. the way the, the way that i'm going i was so pleasantly surprised with this whiskey uh with how good it was and I was so pleasantly surprised with how good that book was and how much I enjoyed that book that when we sat down and, and we're doing this, um, pouring this dram and then reading that book again, I was just like, these are two great surprises that go really well yeah. together. And it's like, it's a moody whiskey. It's a <laughs> moody book. Yeah, that's like, actually a really good way of putting it. Like this, this isn't something that you're going to drink every day. It's not something that you're going to, like, in a hot, like, it's not something you're going to pour on a, again, we're Canadian for all of our American people here. When it's 30 degrees outside yeah, and it's like a hot summer day, you're not going to pour this to be refreshed. But if it's like a moody fall winter day, like it is, right like now, it was when I, <laughs> and it also when I did this, because I, yeah. like, when I, when I sat down and read this and poured this, it was in the fall it was like gloomy outside and like, this is a, a perfect drink for that. And that's a really, really good book yeah. for like late October, Yeah, late October, early November, that Halloween ish kind of vibe um, yeah, actually, or that yeah, like end of January, early February when it's just like, Hey, it's cold. It's miserable. It sucks. This is like a nice little race. So I, I bump up the pairing to like an eight, eight, five for me. Now I bet that once I read all those notes that I didn't read the first time through, I bet when I read those, it's both the, my grade for the book and the parent, I bet they both go up. Yeah. So we might do anyway. some revisits later, but yeah. So, but I mean, for good. us, for the pairing that, that leaves it at an eight Yeah. between it's the nice. two of us, which I think is yeah. a, Hey, if someone says something's an eight out of a 10, I'm going to, I'm going to grab it. I'm going to give it a try. It. So absolutely. So Rotten yeah, to, if Netflix says, or, you know, if Rotten Tomatoes says 80%, I'm 
I'll give it a watch. <laughs> Probably going to like it. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you very much, everybody. If you want uh, more, read up the article. We always have companion articles on our site, thewhiskeygeeks.com. Whiskey does have an E in it. Um, so go to thewhiskeygeeks.com. You can read this companion article. You're going to get a lot more information about both the, the whiskey and the book on our articles. So please go and read those. You can subscribe to us here on the old youtube if you're listening to this as a podcast you can subscribe to us on all of the places where you find your podcasts if you're watching this if you found us on youtube and you want to just listen to us because watching stuff on youtube takes a lot of time like we were talking about you can find us as a podcast as well so um and if you want to email us at all at the whiskey geeks at gmail.com uh we're on social media at the whiskey geeks that's where you find us get in touch right in the comments uh, if you like this book, if you don't like this book, tell us what you think. Yeah. Um, if you like the whiskey, us. if you don't like the whiskey, I mean, I can't Absolutely. imagine someone's not going to like the whiskey. But. Yeah. Um, <laughs> tell us pairings that you like, tell us, give us ideas that you want us to do. If there's a whiskey that you think we need to try, please send us Absolutely. some, no, please tell <laughs> us about it. Um, and if there's books that you think that we need to read, um, please tell us those as well. So we, and lastly, um, we love doing the pairings. That's, the whole point of this uh, if you're drinking a whiskey and you're looking for comic book recommendations tell us what you're drinking we will help you find a whiskey if you are here for the whiskey side and you want to learn more about comics either call your local comic shop and they'll help you out but come to us tell us know what you're drinking and we'll give you some comics to read that that would be absolutely uh, that's go really well with it so that's the best part of this is trying to find those combinations and seeing what works really well and absolutely it's the whole reason we decided we were going to sit down and start doing this yeah, and it's a ton of fun. So before we get out of here, I do always need to thank Colin Response for the use of his song, um, Something About Your Love, from his self-titled album. You can find that on Spotify or wherever you get your music. Please go follow him as well, an amazing artist from Toronto, a good friend of mine as well. So thank you, Colin, for the use of that song. It's an amazing track. Uh, and uh, that's going to be it from, from us for this week. Come yeah, back thanks. again. Yeah, thanks so much, fun. guys. And uh, remember, Scotch and Stories... They were made for each other. Absolutely. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.